Hello YouTube, this is KC1ETB and I am doing a quick little video about the Kenwood TM-D710G for uh, you guys who are trying to use the TNC feature. And um, I run into some issues here and I just wanted to share this video just in case somebody else is running into a similar situation. You know, clearly people are figuring this out on the internet, but um, I just feel like a complete moron for not being able to figure this out sooner. But uh, so I wanted to share this with you. So I picked this radio up because I do NTS traffic uh, here in uh, central and eastern Massachusetts, and I've been looking for you know a rig that will let me do you know this with just one radio, one device. Currently, I've got a Cantronics uh, Cam XL Plus hooked up to an ICOM 7100, and it works fine. I can do my traffic, no problems. I can run all the you know major major applications. I can use um, you know the uh, airmail, uh, I can use uh, Winlink, you know, and, uh, you know, RMS Express, you know, those programs. And, you know, they work fine with that with that setup. But uh, the problem is, is that, you know, you have cables going everywhere, you have extra power being drawn, and, uh, you know, it'd be nice to be able to consolidate down. Um, I don't plan on getting rid of that, but I like to have, you know, just one radio do this. So I bought the Kenwood, and I, you know, based on some of the uh, reviews and some of the uh, online uh, you know, sales I saw. HRO was having a sale on the thing. Got about 40 bucks off, so I'm not complaining about that. So $600 later, I got this thing in the mail and hooked it up, and I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It's got two tuners, which I really enjoy. And um, so I decided that, well, it's time to get the TNC going. So when I first got the radio, you know, I read the documentation as best I could, and, you know, it came, came up and said, you need a special cable to go from the radio to the PC. And of course you do, because every radio vendor likes to do this. Nobody can standardize on one format. So, you know, I went out and bought this guy here, the PG5G cable, and it's basically their proprietary DIN cable to a DB9, uh, you know, D plus type of, uh, you know, the standard DB9 type serial cable. So, okay, that's fine. Well, <laughs> major gripe here is <laughs> who in the hell still uses serial ports on their computers? Nobody, because, well, PC manufacturers stopped using serial 10 to 15 years ago, depending on the vendor you go with. So you have to buy a USB to serial converter, and, you know, not the end of the world, but it's just another cable you have to have. So I went out and bought myself one of these little Insignia USB to serial converters, and, you know, like 20 bucks. You know, I got it at Best Buy. Um, yeah, just it's annoying, but you know it is what it is. All my devices have to do that because for some reason, ham radio hasn't gotten out of the 90s and realized that there's such thing called USB for everything. So anyway, I digress. So I got the thing and I said, okay, let's hook this up. So you know it's got the nice little serial port on the back of it. So I said, okay. So I'm I'm a logical guy here. So I got my radio. I'm gonna move this down here, and you know if you look on the back of this thing, it's got. Two, two ports here. It's got a you know, data port and this is a PC port right here. Sorry, my camera work isn't the greatest, but so I plugged it back here thinking PC, that's what you got to do, right? Because it says PC on it. Well, that's the cable, that's the jack I used to program the radio. You'd have to buy the special, you know, serial cable to buy to program it and, uh, you know, it just works. I got the MC6 uh, program software from Kenwood and hooked it up to the same serial port and it worked fine. So I said, okay, that's, that's cool. But when I tried to hook my radio up to it and then open PuTTY, when I would connect to the appropriate COM port, and in this case it was COM5, it basically just gave me a question mark within the terminal. I said, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe it's, it's a, you know, proprietary packet type of thing. So I said, okay. So I went over to RMS Express because I saw online videos of, of how to do that, and it just said it couldn't initialize the radio, couldn't initialize the TNC. I'd gone through all the serial, you know, all the port settings, Everything on the radio that I was supposed to is configured as what I thought it was supposed to do. So I spent most of the day today trying to figure out what the heck I'm missing here. Went back to the documentation and looked at everything and it just I made sure all my menus were set correctly. Well, it wasn't until I, I you know went into Google and started searching about unable to connect to uh, you know the TNC. I, I ran across the QRZ post that you know another person had put out and asked the question: What's the difference between the COM port and the PC port? So the one on the back of the radio is called the PC port. Well, <laughs> there is a port on the back of the control panel, this guy right here, that's a COM port. So the TNC uses that port there. It uses this guy here. It doesn't use the one on the back of the radio, it uses this one. Really, really annoying. 
So yet more cables that I have to have plugged in, but whatever. So <laughs> hooked it up. I'm just gonna set this back here for now. Hooked it back up and you know onto that serial port and it freaking worked. So <laughs> what I'll do is I'll sw swing this over here and get this as close as you can. So I'm plugged into the TNC right now. And I'm gonna hit control C. There's my I'm back in my command prompt. Can't see it very well, but trust me when I say that it actually is hooked up. So I'm gonna just do a quick connect. KW1U, that's the BBS I connect to here in Massachusetts. And it connects. And I'm gonna do a list traffic, LTN. And there it is. So it obviously works. So in some ways that's a good thing, in some ways it's a bad thing. It's just the fact that I had to struggle with this to get this to actually work. And you know, it just really annoyed me. So I wanted to make the video so that people could understand what I went through as well as hopefully you know avoiding your frustration. So the other thing I wanted to point out here is I'm gonna zoom in here real quick. Wish I could turn that light off my camera, but whatever. So you have to basically turn the turn the packet mode on by pushing this button here. And you'll see when I do this, turns it off, goes to APRS, it's opening. I have to wait for that to finish. That's done. I go there, packet opening, and I'm back on my packet. So just make sure that that says packet 12 on it and you're good to go with your TNC. So hopefully this will save you some hassle and uh, you know frustration at uh, wanting to throw the radio you know out the window. But uh, you know when you spend $600 on a radio, you want it to freaking work. Go figure. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you found it uh, you know helpful. And uh, if you have any other comments or questions, put them down in the uh, comments below. I hope you uh, find it useful. 73 from KC1 ETB.